Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It is day two of December Vlogmas, 25 days of videos, and today I'm going to be sharing all of my November beauty favorites. I only tried a handful of new products in November, but I'm also going to share a very mini haul of the things that I picked up over the Thanksgiving Black Friday holiday. I did a little shopping while we were in Savannah, but first we have to fix this hair. And I was getting ready knowing that I was going to talk about this in my favorites and I figured why not show you and actually demonstrate the product. So this is my very first favorite. It's the L'Oreal Professional Steam Pod. I think this has been around for a really long time but it is new to me and it has changed my world. So the way it works in case you've never tried this before, it comes with a little water bottle and it uses steam along with the heat. So you see you have the little water spout over here you remove that really easily and then you just have to fill up this little water tank only takes a second and i can style my hair about two times before i have to add more water and i always use filtered water i don't know if it makes a huge difference but i figure it probably does once you filled it up you just pop it right back in and then you can turn it on, which I need to plug it in first. There are three heat settings and I've been using 350, which is the lowest heat setting. And I feel like my curls last for three to four days, or at least until my next wash. We are ready to get started. I just divide my hair in half. I'm going to use my heat spray. This is from IGK. It's the Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Spray. It also protects from 450 degrees smells amazing. On both sides of the straightener, you see arrows pointing down. You just want to make sure that the arrows are always pointing down. And I think that's to do with the side of the comb. You don't want to go comb first. You want to go comb in the back, if that makes sense. Ooh, so you can see it's starting to steam now. So we're ready to go. I always brush through each piece first so that it doesn't get tangled. I'm holding my steam pod kind of parallel and again you just make sure that little comb is in the back and you shouldn't have any problems and then I just gently wrap the hair and it goes through really easily boop little curl flip to the back now the only part I have not perfected yet is how to ensure that the curls fall the same on both sides so the way I usually style my hair is I do one side at a time. And what I find is that the side that I style first lasts so much longer. The curls are so much tighter than the side that I do last. Probably because they don't have as much time to set and cool down before I start running my fingers through the hair. So I think what I'm going to try today, I'm going to outsmart the system, I'm going to alternate going to do a couple curls on each side instead of one side at a time and hopefully that will fix the problem. The more I play around with it the easier and the faster it gets. That's another great thing about it is that it's super fast and this one was sent to me complimentary earlier last month in November. I did a campaign with Steampot and Sephora so they sent me the tool. I used it a couple times and I have not switched back. I think what really sold me on this versus every other tool is the damage. So this is supposed to create 90% less damage over time. I'm not sure I've used it long enough to see long-term effects, but it feels like my hair is still really healthy and I don't have to go over any pieces. So I kind of feel like it is creating less heat damage. If you are interested in trying the steam pod, I would recommend, we'll definitely get the set. There's a steam pod on the Sephora website, but then there's also a little limited edition set that comes with products that are basically free. So this is the Kerastase Nectar Thermique. This is the Kerastase K Elixir Ultime Hair Oil. And these are really good sizes. And then this is the K Nutritive 8 Hour Magic Night Serum. I absolutely love this. It's amazing, it's for all hair types, and you can just basically apply it anytime. These are great for travel, they're not little mini sample sizes where you can only use the product once. These alone will last you several months. And starting today, Sephora has another promotion for the holidays. 
For all Beauty Insiders, it's the Gifts for All event. It starts today on the 2nd and it goes through December 11th. If you enter the code GETGIFTING at checkout, you get 20% off your order, which is amazing. And I'm pretty sure it's 20% off for everybody. So even if you're just a Beauty Insider or a VIB, you don't have to be Rouge. This is for everybody across the board, but it is a one-time use coupon. It starts today, you don't have to use it today, you have until the 11th, so no rushing. But in case you are planning to shop at Sephora for your holiday gifts, and then you also get 30% off Sephora collection, again, which is amazing. You know how much I love the Sephora Collection Pro Brushes. I will list all of my favorite gift ideas and brushes down below just in case you're interested. And then on the 13th, that's when the Fragrance for All event starts, which is 20% off full-size fragrances, and I believe that runs through December 24th. I know the curls look a little bit nuts, but I'm just going to keep going through the rest of my favorites and then I'll properly fix it at the end. I also don't have any lipstick on because I have a lipstick favorite to share. We have got to talk about La Perla Beauty because I've been so impressed with all of the products that I've tried from them. They did send over a very generous box complimentary, but they didn't ask me to post anything and yet I've felt so inspired to just create content on my own because these are products that I love, I enjoy, and I would absolutely spend my money on these. The lipsticks in particular I love because they're really creamy and it says matte, but they are not matte on the lips. So this is shade 109 Rosewood Red. This is what I'm going to apply today. I also have 101 Nude Red, which is the perfect kind of deep nude. I took this with me to Savannah. It's what I wore every day on the trip. And then they also sent over Venetian Red, which is a really deep, almost blue-based blood red. It is so sexy. This is my favorite shade of red lipsticks. I did create a little Instagram reel where I tried them all on. I love the packaging. When you open them up, they have a beautiful little design etched on the tube, but it's also refillable. All of the details are really beautiful with these lipsticks. I believe Nordstrom carries La Perla Beauty. This lip liner is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip in the shade 1C. I shared this in my final, final Sephora haul which I posted to YouTube Shorts. I picked up a few last minute things at like 11.45 on the last day of the sale. Okay, so this is Rosewood Red. It feels so creamy. I mean, I guess it's not glossy on the lip, but this does not feel like a normal matte lipstick. It's so opaque. And it just sort of covers the lip. Reminds me of the Tom Ford or the Hourglass lipstick formula. And you know I love a lip gloss, so I'm going to top that off with this Buxom Peppermint Hot Cocoa. This is another one of my favorite things. It's so pretty and it smells delicious. It's the perfect kind of darker nude. So I think you could probably wear this alone, but it looks really pretty on top of a nude lip or this rosewood, and it feels really tingly. If you like the peppermint hot cocoa, or is it the peppermint mocha at Starbucks? You need this, it's amazing. I think they have other colors as well. It's the Full On Plumping Lip Cream from Buxom. It definitely has some color to it on its own. Ooh, and it's so shiny and it makes everything so much more comfortable underneath. Even though these lipsticks are so nice, you really don't need anything on top unless you're like me and you just have to have lip gloss. Another product that I've really enjoyed, the body cream, smells incredible. It does not smell like anything else I've ever tried. It doesn't smell like you would expect it to smell. It reminds me a little bit of Christmas. It's a little bit citrusy, but it's a little bit like cinnamon, nutmeg, spicy. It's incredible. And the scent really lasts a long time. So I applied this today and it's nice and lightweight. It's a really kind of thin serum -y lotion. In fact, I think they call it a serum lotion. But the scent is so heavenly. Mm, I love this scent. The body lotion is so nice. And again, the packaging is really pretty. This would look beautiful displayed on a vanity and it's refillable. It's the Firming Body Lotion Serum. So I guess it's firming, I have no idea. I didn't look up any of the ingredients, but I just know this smell is really, really nice. 
So this I've also loved. I have some more makeup here. This is the foundation that I'm wearing today. It's the new, I think it's relatively new, Lancome Tinty Doll Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. I love this. I think it has the perfect kind of luminous matte finish. I wouldn't say it's incredibly luminous and dewy, and I think the name might be deceiving because it's called Care and Glow. Care obviously means skincare, and it does have skincare ingredients, but the glow, might fool some people because it's not really glowing and radiant and dewy which is perfect for me because i still get kind of oily in my t-zone after a while if i'm wearing a foundation and i'm out and about in miami where it's really humid i do tend to get a little oily and if it's really hot outside my makeup will start melting off my face i've not experienced that at all with this in fact i think it perfects it doesn't look or feel heavy on the skin at all I've been applying this with my Sephora 55 brush, which does sheer it out a little bit more than some of my normal foundation brushes, but I don't think it really makes a difference. I use shade 310N. I love it just as much as my current holy grail top drawer favorite, which has been the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass. I purchased this when it first launched earlier this year and I'm down to the bottom. I'm almost done and I have a feeling with holiday season, I'll probably finish this before the end of the year. If not, I'll finish it in January, definitely. And I was thinking, wow, this is so amazing. I'll definitely want a backup bottle. But now I don't feel like I need one because this is just as good. I don't think the formula is exactly the same, but it sort of checks the same boxes and it fulfills the same need in my foundation wardrobe. I would wear them for the same occasions. Shantikai sent over their holiday collection, the Lotus collection this year, and these are a couple of my favorite pieces. This is the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder and the Lotus Radiance Highlighter. The glow powder is different from the blur powder, which is really popular. I think it's different. This is slightly more luminous and it's very light. It's very finely milled, so you have to be careful. It can develop that crust on top if you go in with a brush that's even slightly damp. So it looks like your brush isn't picking up any product, but you can really see it on the face. Now, I don't think this is a setting powder. It's more of a finishing powder. Think of it as a compact version of Guerlain Meteorites. So I wouldn't use this to set my concealer. I would need something a little bit more matte for that. But as a final, final step, right before you run out the door, just dust a little bit on your face. Give yourself a little extra luminosity. It's beautiful. And of course, they killed it with the packaging the way they always do. The highlighter has a really pretty light pink undertone. You can barely tell, but it's kind of a light peachy pink and it's very soft and natural, which you would expect from Shantikai. However, they've come out with holiday highlighters in the past that have been blinding and very sparkly. That This is totally different, but it kind of gives a nice winter wonderland, a little bit more fresh faced makeup look. It doesn't look too light. It just looks slightly pearly pink. I mentioned that I did one final, final Sephora haul on the very last day, but in my short, I wasn't able to show you these products that I also purchased, but these were made in person a couple weeks ago when we had a really busy weekend. My husband's family was in town and there was one Saturday that I was out all day long. I had events and lunch with friends and then I was meeting with, up with them later on in the evening. And I think I left the house at 11 o'clock in the morning and I didn't get home until close to midnight. And halfway through the day, I had an hour downtime. It wasn't enough time to come home and change and shower. I knew I needed to make a trip to Sephora so I could purchase deodorant and freshen up a little bit. And I ended up picking up three because I couldn't choose. The lady was really nice and helpful. Whenever I walked in, she recommended this Caudalie Vino Fresh deodorant. It's 24 hour natural deodorant, eucalyptus and grape. I don't know. I have not tried this one yet. It smells like the Beauty Elixir, if you're familiar. So it's eucalyptus, kind of rosemary. It's very cooling, slightly minty. And it looks like kind of a gel texture. Haven't tried this yet, so I can't speak to whether or not it really works. This one I did try. 
This is the Necessaire deodorant gel and it does not work. At least in my opinion, I tried this one time and now it smells like armpit. The little roller ball. This is supposed to make my armpit smell good, but the reverse happened and now my deodorant just smells like my armpit, unfortunately. So I'm not a huge fan of the Necessaire, which was also recommended. This was a total guess, a gamble. The Sol de Janeiro Rio Dio. Now I do love Sol de Janeiro products and I know they smell heavenly, so not that much of a risk, but it works so well. This has been my favorite natural deodorant that I've ever tried. It's aluminum free, it has the Troza 62 fragrance, and I swear this smells so nice, but I don't stink whenever I wear this and I don't sweat too much. And it doesn't smell like my armpit. <laughs> That's immediately a good sign. Yeah, it has that warm salted caramel pistachio smell, which is really pretty. But I was so impressed with this deodorant. Didn't really have high expectations, I just sort of thought, it would smell the best out of all of them and it definitely does. I already know this pick is going to be very polarizing, but I can't help myself. I really like this new Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes eyeshadow palette. It is a bit dry, it is a little bit dusty, and that's been the main complaint that I've heard about this palette. It kicks up quite a bit of powder, no matter how lightly you tap your brush, it's just like, I don't know why. It's the strangest thing, and even the little topper shades are very dry as well. So those are best applied with fingers in my experience, although you can use a flat shader brush. I still really like it because it's so convenient. I love these colors, and even though it is a neutral palette, I mean, it is very boring and basic. You probably already have this 10 times over. So is it essential? No, it's definitely not. I have been so used to wearing that Pillow Talk palette from Charlotte Tilbury almost every single day for years. It launched in 2019 and I have hit pan on four or five shades, but it's so warm that I've really enjoyed using this because it's a little bit cooler. It's more of a neutral, cool toned. It's not my favorite palette in my collection, but I'm gonna get so much more use out of this versus some of the others that might perform a little bit better that it's just worth it. So now I am moving on from all of my November favorites and I'm gonna show you all of the little knickknacks that I picked up while I did some shopping in Savannah. I didn't really go crazy, it wasn't really the point of the trip, but while we were exploring the historic downtown area, we stumbled into a store called the Paris Market, and I fell in love. I could have spent all day there. It took all of my self-control not to purchase everything in the store. I was so overwhelmed that I almost left with nothing. It was either I was going to spend way too much money or just not buy anything at all. I imagine if you're from Savannah or if you've visited, you know the Paris market is a big deal. I felt like we had discovered a hidden gem, but I did end up purchasing a little tourist take-home gift. Every time we visit a new city, we pick up a mug, and usually it's the You Are Here collection from Starbucks. We didn't get one of those this time, but I did pick up a Paris Market mug because I thought it looked so pretty. Our cabinet is so stuffed with mugs, I don't know where I'm going to fit that in, but I could not resist. And then they had a bunch of candles downstairs and they all smelled incredible. And I really wanted a candle, but I just told myself that I needed to stop purchasing candles. So I resisted, now I have regret, although I discovered that they have a website, so I will probably end up purchasing a candle later on, but I picked up this little pack of matches. I also visited a little candle store and I picked up this wick trimmer. I already showed you this. It's rose gold and I didn't have one. I have so many candles and I need, need to start burning through some of them and a couple of them definitely need a trim. So this was an essential purchase. That's all of the touristy stuff, but on Black Friday, I did run into anthropology. My mom and I were just killing time while my dad and my husband were scouting out the perfect place to watch the World Cup game. And I did find a few things. I don't know if it was the best deal ever. I kind of just purchased them because we were out shopping and we were bored. I didn't feel like the deals and the sales were that great this year. And I've heard that sentiment echoed a lot on social media. People are saying that the sales just felt like 
normal sales, end of the month sales. This is a skirt from the brand Hutch. I went with an extra small. This was originally 98 and I think it was maybe 50% off. It might have only been 30, which isn't that great of a deal. But it's so cute. I really like the material. It's kind of this thicker crepe. So it's not see-through, but it feels really nice and it's stretchy. It has a little slit on the side, but it's the perfect little not so mini skirt. And it kind of gives winter wonderland vibes. It was the perfect fit. And the reason I loved the skirt is because it looked so nice with this sweater. This sweater is gorgeous. It's from the brand Maeve, which I believe is an anthropology owned brand. I picked up an extra small. They had several colors, but I really like this kind of dusty baby blue. I also stumbled upon this white button down. This happened to be on a extra 50% off rack. So it has the little yellow sticker, but it was still $98 originally. I think I paid 50 bucks for this which isn't that great of a deal. I mean, it's not a terrible price because I really like the material. It's a softer, more relaxed white button down. So you wear this more casually. I think this would look so cute with jeans, maybe a skirt if you really wanted to dress it up, but I will most likely just throw this on with jeans to run around. And it feels really soft and buttery. That's what I like about it. I don't think you can have too many white button downs. So this is just a nice, easy breezy, casual throw on type of top. And that was all I got, those three items. I'm happy with everything I purchased, but I wouldn't say I had an amazing, successful Black Friday. In order to really feel successful on Black Friday or a big shopping day, I need to get some great deals. This was just boredom shopping. But that completes all of my favorites and my little haul. I'm not going to leave you with this curly hair. I'm gonna go ahead and run my fingers through it. This is how I usually break up the curls. I don't even really spray it with anything. I used to spritz my hair with the Amica spray and there's also a texture spray from Oribe that I sometimes use. You can brush through them if you really wanna break them up. But since I usually go a couple days without washing my hair, I'll just kind of finger through the curls. I still think this side is holding a little bit better. But maybe it's just the front. I think the front, I curled this a little bit too tight. Eventually it will fall. And this is the hair. Oh gosh, accidentally got it in my lipstick. It's so plush and bouncy, and I honestly feel like it looks like rollers, but better, it holds better than rollers. So if you like volume and you like bouncy curls, or even if you just like straight hair, <laughs> it can just be completely straight, highly recommend checking out that Steam Pod. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.